Yeah, we got some bracing. So we are gonna be working on my Mini Cooper today and I have some parts from Ultra Racing. So I have an interior chassis bracing piece and there's a rear subframe chassis bracing component. Now both of these are gonna be going in. The install is relatively easy. Um, I might need to remove my exhaust system and some heat shielding to get access for this one. Uh, but this one here should be really simple. So this guy here is a chassis brace that connects from one side of the car all the way to the other. This one here is a four point and this connects up in between each of the control arms. So both of these components should be a straight install. There shouldn't be anything too complicated. The only thing that you will need to do homework wise, if you guys want to do something like this, is you guys are going to need the torque specs for whatever bolts you take out. So I already have all that stuff. So we're going to jump right into the install. Let's go. So for this larger piece, this, this guy here goes in the middle of the car. So it actually goes on the inside. Now this component here has one end that has a hole in it, and the other end has the exact same thing. Now the way that you would install this is you first need to take out the seat belts that are found inside the car. So all you need to do is just take out the bottom bolt, and this guy here gets bolted in between the two of them. So for that, you're gonna need a T50 Torx bit with a wrench or whatever you want to use, and some blue thread locker along with a torque wrench to install it back on the car. So here's the piece from Ultra Racing. So we're gonna go ahead and install this. It looks pretty nice. I'm not sure if it's painted or powder coated, but the finish looks good. So I'm just gonna take off the little saran wrap that's on here that's protecting the finish. And then we're gonna go ahead and jump inside the car. So inside the car, it connects up on the backside over here. So it connects up to the bottom bolt found on the lower anchor point for the passenger seatbelt, along with the driver's side seatbelt. So using a wrench and a T50 Torx bit, you're gonna come down here and you're gonna take each one of these bolts out. So with it out, you're gonna have these pieces here. So you're gonna have this part here that bolts up and acts as a brace, and you're gonna put the chassis bracing piece down in here. So with the room bar now inside the car, I have that little like metal fatter piece inside there. So this washer kind of deal, this is going to be in the car like that. This bar goes over top of it, and then you're gonna have the bolt and the seat belt, come on, all running through that little hole that's found down here. Now, this probably would have made more sense while I got these belts sent out and got them changed out to red ones. Um, if you guys wanna find more information about this, I'll have a link in the description box. But as for this, it's pretty straightforward. So just make sure that you don't twist the belt when you're putting this back on the car. If you have two hands, this makes it a lot easier, but um, this just goes like that, and then tighten this up. Before putting some blue thread locker on the threads of this, go ahead and install all this stuff first, just so that everything bolts in as it should, test fit both sides, make sure the belts work as they should, and then go ahead and take the bolt out and then torque this up with the blue Loctite on the threads. Now with that complete, this will basically mount up this room bar inside the car. There you go, so that means that this is now torqued up to 27 foot pounds. Repeat the same procedure for the passenger side anchor bolt. With it torqued up, this is now installed, and this guy here isn't going anywhere. So this here should prevent the chassis from twisting a little bit whenever you go around turns. So if there's any deflection between these two points, this bar will hold it and brace it all together. Now this here is the easier of the two pieces for this car to install. Now as for the rear lower mount, this guy here is gonna be found underneath the car. So we're gonna have to jack it up, and we're gonna have to go underneath the car to install it. I'm really good at this whole planning this kind of video thing ahead because if I was smart, I probably should have not installed my exhaust system when I did um, because I should have probably made this video here first. Um, but <laughs> here we are. <laughs> so what we're doing is now jumping underneath the back side of the car so it's supported with jacks and jack stands and you can't really tell with it here but we're going to have to take out the muffler section because the brace that we're going to be putting in here goes behind there and it connects up to the control arms on this side and on this side. With the muffler out of the car, you can see that there's a lot more space underneath here. Now we still need to remove the heat shielding so we can get access to the bolts that are found back there. Now I just took a look at these. I really don't think I'll be able to put this heat shield back on once I take this off. Um, so I'm gonna have to pro so I'm probably gonna have to place an order for a new one. And while I'm at it, I think I'm gonna be replacing the one right in front of it as well. These have definitely seen better days. On the note of that, the subframe as well is going to be getting restored come winter time. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm just gonna be driving it and enjoying it. Uh, this is going to be coming out and I'm going to be powder coating it so that, well, it lasts longer and it doesn't look 
like this, because this is pretty atrocious. Um, I'm gonna use a little bit of heat, maybe some penetrating fluid to get access to these. I wanna see if I can take these out without snapping the studs. It looks like this one here is already snapped. So yeah, this looks fun. Welcome to Canada. go there's one please don't break Woo! now we're talking oh there you go so there's that now with that out of the way you can see that we pretty much have complete access to the rear now this is where this brace is gonna bolt up you guys want to see some magic happen look at this oh yeah oh yeah Mmm. If this doesn't get you excited, I don't know what does. Oh yeah. And this is why cars in the rust belt look like this. Winters and neglect will give you results like this. So thank you previous owner. Um, well, now this is my problem. All right guys, so I ran into a little problem after trying to install the lower rear brace for the subframe. So this here, can you see how it's basically square or a rectangle? Um, this lower bottom piece shouldn't be of this design. I contacted Ultra Racing, they're gonna send me out a new one, um, the correct version of this because this is, I don't know how this got to me, this is the old version. Um, so this doesn't actually allow you to have the exhaust in here um, and bolt this up. So no big deal, um, I'm just gonna put all this back together. But in the meantime, with the exhaust like this, I'm gonna fire it up. I wanna see what it sounds like. <laughs> Yeah, so that will for sure get me too much attention. Um, so once this new piece comes in from Ultra Racing, I'll throw it on and I'll make the install for you guys. Um, but in the meantime, I'm gonna put the heat shield back on, muffler back on, and I'm gonna show you what else I'm gonna be doing to the mini, well, now that we can install this guy here. So with this all now back together and bolted up, I gotta say, it is really nice having an exhaust system that is like five different pieces that's all clamped together. So my MagnaFlow exhaust is kind of like the exact same thing as this. Um, so if you, want to, if you want to do any kind of work, you're not really gonna have to take out the entire exhaust system and then you have to you know, like put it all back together. Um, this is a Scorpion exhaust. Guys, I definitely recommend it. Even if you guys can get one made up that's like this. Clamps are so nice. Um, so in the meantime, this is the way it's gonna go. Um, now another thing, what I might actually do, see how this muffler section here, see how I just removed that? Well, I kinda wanna get this little muffler section made up custom at a shop where it's fully straight piped. So if I want, I can run the muffler, or if I want, I can run a fully straight piped exhaust system. Maybe from when I go to the track, or, or you know, those days where you're just feeling kinda four-year-old-ish, and you wanna be an absolute potato on the road? Yeah, let's go. <laughs> Um, but yeah, okay, so with this now back together, let me show you what else I have in store for the Mini. All right, so my Mini's got a, a pepper white, a silver, red, and black color scheme going on. So right now, there's only a little bit of red. So there's a little bit at the brakes. Um, there's the seat belts that are found inside the car. There's the rear brakes, and that's pretty much it. There's not really any other kind of red. So what I actually wanna do is change that. So what I have inside this box here, are some pieces that are going to fix that problem. So I've seen a bunch of pepper white minis that have red mirrors, and I think it looks pretty good. So on eBay, I picked up a set of used um, OEM Mini Cooper mirrors. These are regular, you know, just standard mirrors. There's nothing fancy to this. Now, the reason why I bought these versus uh, caps that just go on top of those mirrors is that this here is an OEM piece, which means it's not gonna fall off, it's high quality, and for 50 bucks each, I cannot complain. So I'm gonna have to open this up and each one of like the little mirror caps, um, it, they're all just clipped on. So you can unclip it and then you can basically replace the ones that are on the car with different ones. Well, actually what I could do as well, okay, so take a look at this. I remember seeing this. I might be able to just literally take out those two bolts and swap mirrors. Hmm. See, I'm not just a pretty face. So we're gonna see if that's gonna work. Um, I'm gonna, Try it, give it a shot. I know that the, the caps can come off easily, um, but I'm gonna unbox this uh, and see if I can actually get that to work. Because if I can, if I can just literally take out those bolts and then put this new one in there, it might save me a little bit of work and it'll actually um, 
prevent me from potentially breaking these. Yeah, um, I tried looking online for these same kind of just regular OEM uh, chili red meerkats. I haven't been able to find anything. Going to a Wreckers or something like that is probably gonna be your easiest bet. Now, on that other note, on the note of changing the color of some stuff on the Mini, I wanna also change the color of the roof. I contemplated red, but I think that might be a little bit too much. Um, so what I might do is vinyl wrap it or paint it uh, gloss black. I think that'll look really nice. So that way, see like the little belt line on the Mini? So from here up is gonna be, well actually, I lied. All of this is gonna be black, where everything below it is gonna be the pepper white color. But, let's see if this is gonna work. So it looks like it has the standard mini connectors on the bottom. So if I take those two bolts out, I actually should get this to work. I'm really hoping that Germany didn't really overcomplicate this. So there's going to be one bolt here on the front and there's going to be another one on the back side there that you'll have to remove. So I'm gonna be using my wrench here with a five millimeter male hex bit. Um, I'm gonna start with the front, take it out, and then move to the back one. So I really hope there's not gonna be any sensors or anything too crazy in there that's gonna prevent me from taking them out or there's gonna give me, an, I don't know, an issue down the road. Um, there's no sensors, there's nothing else inside these mirrors, so knock on wood, the connectors should be the same and, uh, and it should be a direct bolt-on. Worst case scenario, I'll take the mirror caps off and then swap them onto this housing. Okay, that's longer than I was expecting. Um, let's turn this and then we'll take this one out. Okay, oh my gosh. Yep, you can tell my car was winter driven. So there's a little connector on the bottom. So you push in on the sides and it'll release the two little tabs, one there, another one there. But look at this, look at that corrosion. Yeah, welcome to Canada, boys. Um, okay, not a big deal. That's actually a lot better than I was expecting. So swap this out for the red one. So other than being a little bit more corroded, this one here, they look exactly the same. So the connectors on the bottom are the same. There's gonna be one, two, three. Oh, they are not the same. This one here has four pins. This one here has five. Ha ha. What is the difference? Heated maybe? Whatever. So we're gonna be putting this one here in the car and we're gonna hopefully have it so that it works properly. So this isn't rocket science. All you're doing is plugging this back in and it should in essence work. Now I'm gonna bolt all this in place, but that there is the red mirror now installed on the Mini. So if this doesn't work, I'm gonna swap back um, and then just change the mirror caps, but we'll see. We'll turn the car on and I'll let you guys know what's up. So this here is the before with the standard pepper white mirror covers. And this here is with both of the chili red mirrors installed on the Mini. With the mirrors red, I think it definitely does look good with the red brakes because it's the same red. It matches the red seat belts. And I might maybe even put a little bit more red accents on the Mini. But so far, I gotta say, it's starting to look pretty good. So on the front of the car, let me just address one quick thing. So I've got my black headlights, chrome ring, black grille, chrome bezel around it. There's a lot of black and chrome going on on the car. Now, just this past weekend, I wrapped uh, all the chrome that was found up front, and I didn't really like it. So I wrapped it all gloss black. I thought it would look good, considering it'd be more black up front, but surprisingly, I didn't like it. So. What I'm also doing then along that note is I want to change up the taillights back here. So with the black headlights up front, I figured I'd kind of want to match that. So these here are the first generation R56 uh, taillights. So as you can tell, these are light on the inside, chrome ring. What I'm actually going to be doing is, oh, what is that? Oh, that's what I'm doing. Oh, I'm going to be changing up the taillights. So these are on the LCI or the black line remodeled taillights, so these here have black innards versus the, the lighter colored ones. So I'm gonna be swapping these ones out for these and I think it's gonna look pretty good. Um, that's gonna be in a future video because if I'm not mistaken, there's gonna be a little bit of extra modifying that needs to be done to the reverse lights because if I'm not mistaken, these do not have reverse lights in them. Don't ask me why, but many decide to change it up and the new reverse light is actually situated down here. So I'll get into that in a later video, but you know, just keep in mind this is to come. I think she's starting to come together and I think it looks pretty damn good so far. Um, I'm gonna be installing more chassis bracing stuff on the Mini to try and make this as stiff as possible. Uh, right now, this car already does three wheel. I wanna make it three wheel more. Uh, but the red looks good. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section what you guys think of it. What else should I do to it? What do you guys think of the roof? Should I do it black? Should I do it red? Should I leave it as is? 
Um, for the tint, I want to change it out because it's a it's pretty old crappy tint on the car. I want to change that out, maybe go something a little bit darker so that it's like really dark black from the belt line up. If you guys want to check out Ultra Racing's products, they've got a ton of stuff for uh, countless different cars. Um, you guys can find more information in the description box. Parts are good, quality's good. Um, I'll definitely make a video when that new piece comes in for the Mini, but as for this video, that's pretty much it. If you guys have any further questions, comment sections down there. You guys know what to do by now. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you later. Peace.